Bob Fat Blunt. And we're gonna see what's going on in these YouTube streets. Got them talking about all situations, all hip hop, all entertainment, the YouTube streets. That's where it's all going down at. Because everybody like to talk behind these cameras and behind these mics because they ain't got to run into nobody in the real streets. It's all here, bro. It's all here. I'm talking about, we talking about it from a real perspective. My reaction, my opinion, fuck what you got. Son Campbell. He always talking about he for the people. He want to do this and that, this and that. But you never see him out here in the streets. He see somebody out here actually trying to do a little progress. Okay, if he did it the wrong way, that's one thing. But coming from a nigga that don't do shit, but see him promote goddamn gun violence and prison life and all that shit and talking about what you did to a nigga and what you won't do, but you the same nigga that let a nigga... Do. Man, we ain't even gonna go there. But I'm gonna let y'all check out this video. I'm going to goddamn put my two cents in there every here and uh, whatever. But for the most part, I'm going to let y'all hear what these clowns had to talk about. Now, respect the DJ Academic. Now, I respect his grind. But the nigga is bad for hip-hop. He, he bad for black people in general, my nigga. Because all he do is goddamn throw gasoline on the fire. If you've seen his Chirac series and everything, you know exactly what I mean. But let's get into this video, man. This guy should be on the same side as us. But he hates me. And I don't know what he thinks about you. My son left the gun up in his right palm. Pop they sleep so they die calm. Kill or be killed. That's the shit that I'm on. It's Desperado style. Shooting at him. Side on. I'm going. You mean the dope like heaven. My son, the first time I heard my son was the same day I went to go do a Jux. Got my first Rolex. The first, now I ain't going to say the brother name. Me and my son, like some of the dudes that, the dudes that my son look up to. Nah, as you... As you could tell, man, the nigga, nigga was a real fan, man. The nigga really, the nigga really a fanboy, because I can't name shit that my son rap. Only thing I know my son from is coming home doing the Vlad interview and got them speaking on real shit, just real recognized, real. You could tell when a man talking on a man level and when these niggas just doing that bullshit promotion clown shit, trying to goddamn make themselves seem tough. You you start off by talking about a nigga and rapping his raps and then try to tell, then try to throw dirt on that nigga name. I was committing crimes with. I ain't gonna say his name because I said it before, whatever the case. But this dude fighting to get his freedom, so I'm a, I'm gonna slow it down. But yeah, the first time I heard my song, I was a fan of my song, of his music, a fan of him. He's still a fan. Always been a fan of my song and his music, and two I seen the hypocrisy in this nigga. I saw just like, you know, and by the way, I really didn't even have an issue with him. I, I felt like instead of tackling, you see what I like about you? You tackle everybody with real issues. You're not scared of like, oh, you know what? These guys, if they see me, they're going to beat me up. If these guys, they're really tough. These guys, they will give me a whiskey and a toilet water. You're like, what's up? You, you, yeah. you, the thing with my son, my son, I think he goes down a list and he says, well, I could talk about what Jim Jones is doing, but nah, they're going to beat me up. What about this guy? Oh, he might do some stuff to me. And he go all the way down the list. He even passes your name. I should get this to Son Campbell guy. Nah, he might do something. No, he just write raps about me and talk about me indirectly. He's not going to say my name because he feels like I'm bigger than my son now. I needed my son's help with the Africa Bear Body situation. Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's the Kush Man. You are now tuned in to the YouTube streets. Let's take a pause right there. See, you got to listen to these double-talking ass niggas. You got to listen to what they actually say out of their motherfucking mouth. So like the nigga said, he he actually was a fan of the man. He feels some type of way because he reached out to the man, you know what I'm saying, and about the African Ben Bottle situation where he was being molested and all that. And I guess he wanted to expose African Ben Bottle. But the thing is, this man ain't react the way you wanted him to react. The same thing with academics, you know what I'm saying? At first, you was looking at him like, oh, who is this cat? Who is this cat? You know, scared to death like a little scary-ass nigga would be. Then, when you start, you know, doing more research on a nigga, like, oh, I can let up on him. He went to jail for uh, robbing a cab driver and this and that, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't feel that fear no more because you got your money up and you found a way to goddamn hide yourself. Nah, this nigga must, I mean, this nigga, Hussein, Hussein, however the fuck you pronounce this nigga name, 
You just sound like a real hater, bro. And that's just bottom line. Like, y'all niggas ain't even got no justifiable reason why you ain't even like the man. You were just looking at this man, life on the outside in, and mad because the man ain't coming fuck with you the way you thought he should come fuck with you. Because niggas could see straight through y'all niggas. And like you say, oh, he picking and choosing who he hollering at, this and that. Because those, all those niggas you named, I've heard my son even say this. He know the, the, he know the rules of the street. He ain't coming at niggas all kind of way because he know what that's going to have to do when you have to run into these niggas in the street. Now you got to have your little homies go crash out and shit about some shit you done said on YouTube and all that shit. Y'all niggas ain't no threat. That's what y'all do. Y'all niggas just talk. Y'all niggas YouTube. That's why a nigga can say something about y'all niggas. Y'all niggas ain't, y'all don't pose no threat because y'all, y'all doing it all for views, likes, and, and the fucking, the feed, the fire, and the kosher. See, when he talk to these niggas, them niggas that y'all mentioned, he know that when he see them in the streets, it got to actually be so. So him thinking as a goddamn nigga using chess moves and using his goddamn head, unlike y'all niggas do, and like this nigga Sean Campbell, he motherfucking, but everybody know this nigga the police, so niggas ain't really, that's why niggas ain't fucking with him. I mean, not to change the subject, but you can tell that this nigga here is protected, but yeah, nigga know that it ain't it ain't no real beef with y'all. It's all cap. It's all talk. It's all views and likes. So you might as well just use that for what it's worth. But I'm going to let these niggas continue with this old goddamn dick riding each other shit, jacking each other off and shit. Right? He promised me he was going to help me. He never did. He ignored me. Then I started watching the hypocrisy of the topics that he touched on. He always picked on like Trinidad James. Everybody that my son challenges is a sucker. The only reason why he stepped up with whack is because whack bullying him is like, all right, I think I can fight whack back right at right now at this point or whatever. Now, listen to what this nigga just said. That shit don't even make no fucking sense, dumbass nigga. So he'll fuck with Trinidad James, the nigga from a city that he don't know, he don't know nothing about this man. He don't know, yeah, he could be singing that white, that, that crazy ass shit, but that nigga could have been a real killer. You know what I'm saying? He goes at whack because what? He got to protect himself. He know, hey, nigga, I'm telling hey, that man used to tell whack, nigga, it is what it is. Nigga, I'm in LA all the time. Nigga, I move around. How the fuck I move around? You know what I'm saying? You already said a whack official. Shit, whack run with real fucking bloods, nigga. Pyro bloods, nigga. In, in Compton, nigga, where that shit started at. So, if you address a real nigga, I, I'm going I'm to go ahead and say you a real nigga. Talking about he just pick and choose. What well, shit, nigga? He, he, he stood up. He stood ten toes down, nigga, when it came down to that nigga down. I don't understand you niggas. Just, when you try to discredit a, a man, you'll say some shit that don't even fucking make sense, nigga. But you the nigga that let a nigga, I ain't going to say let a nigga because that shit could have happened to anybody, but a man took your manhood and now you riding around with him killing other niggas. Nigga, you got the gun, nigga. You can handle that. But every time some nigga talk to you about that, nigga, you change the subject. And I'm going to expound on that a little bit. Every time a nigga point him out for, hey, well, why you ain't going to do this to the nigga that did harm to you? You going to do all this harm, all this gangster shit, all these folks out here in the street, but the nigga that did harm to you, you don't do shit. You a gangster, though. You talking about what another nigga did when another nigga did something to him? Man, please, man, let, just listen to this double talking ass nigga, man. And I ain't, you know what I'm saying, I ain't trying to be like biased against this nigga or nothing like that, but this shit is ridiculous, my nigga. This is the nigga that's feeding y'all, bro. This man got over 600,000 followers, bro. This nigga feeding the minds of a lot of niggas, bro. This shit gotta stop. You watched him handpick like a bitch all the dudes that he's gonna deal with and the topics that he deal with, and it started eating me. My son reached out to me. He looked at my Instagram page and he seen my co-defendant. He already knew I was fucking with X and him, but when he seen Eric Bennett, see Eric Bennett is an old school name, niggas like this. Is, is my son a street nigga? Like is, is he like a gangster? Like I, I can't tell what he is. So I, no real talk. Like I don't know if he's like, the way my son talks to me. He talks to me like he's a killer. I'm gonna be very honest. Listen, so listen, that's what I'm. My son, my son, in his younger days, he was a menace. No, never a menace. But he will fist fight. He will 
Don't throw his knuckles up. My son is not a sucker. If, if you had to go somewhere and have a fist fight, my son will throw his hands up, depending on who you fight. Because, like I said, in his earlier days, he got smacked and drank through in his face. In Bronx River, not in Bronx River, but he was in the... Now, now, let's expound on what this nigga just said. I'm talking about, let me show you the hypocrisy. The same shit that this nigga accusing this man of. This is why you don't like him. And because the nigga done... Uh, did something to somebody in your family the man that talked about your own none of that shit the reason you don't like him because you feel like first of all he didn't come to your help when you ask a nigga to help you which the man don't fucking know you and then when a nigga see that you talking about oh yeah this man did this and that this and that to me but you run around here talking about you a killer you a this and that but you sitting here and still hanging with the nigga that molested you you're going to do all this harm to everybody else, but the nigga that molested you, oh, he, he out of bounds. That's your father now. But then, at the same mind, you saying that you we got two niggas trying to discredit a man, the street cred. First of all, the man a survivor. And a lot of niggas ain't surviving out here. He's a, He, he might have went to jail for some, to prison for some shit that... A lot of us done did, nigga. I ain't never robbed a, a cab driver, but I done robbed motherfuckers that was just as fucking broke as me. So, nigga, that's the same shit. You know what I mean? If you talking about you, the nigga that you is, I'm pretty sure you done robbed niggas about some stuff, dumb, dumb ass shit, done did some dumb ass shit, bro. So, regardless of how you landed yourself in that house, nigga, did you handle yourself in that house? Did you take it? Did you got them stand ten toes down without having a million niggas that got to have your back, nigga? All you do is talk about other niggas. Oh, me and such and such, me and such and such, such and such. This man came home and got down with his with his head right. So, you sitting here trying to discredit nigga. Oh, he ain't did this, he ain't did that. Oh, he just a nigga that uses his hand for the Like, you know this man personally, bro. I don't know y'all personally, so I can't say what you won't do or whatever, because any man can kill. But the fact that you on here trying to discredit this man because he would rather go out there, and even if he made a mistake and said, hey, I'm going to deal with this Black Lives Matter shit, his intentions was good. You ain't even make an effort. But I sit here and try to call a nigga an ambulance chaser, DJ Academics doing the same fucking thing. Y'all mad because a nigga challenged what you saying and challenged the bullshit that you doing. That's what you mad about. Just, just, let's keep it a hundred. But how the fuck are you gonna sit here and try to discredit this man of being a man that can stand up on ten toes and go hand in hand with a nigga? Oh, he ain't no sucker. But then you gonna later on and say he is a sucker. What the fuck? Come on, bro. That's double talking. Let us know. Somebody, like 10 toes say, man, shit. Somebody talk to me. Somebody tell me. <laughs> somebody talk to me. Tell me something, my nigga. Because I, I don't understand, my nigga. What, what they do that at? And when they do that drink, it smacked him. He was like, why you doing this to me? It's Nigel's fault. He was crying like a little bitch. At that same age, you couldn't throw a drink and smack me in my face. You would have, your whole family would have died. I was a man. Y'all see, y'all see how this nigga try to make himself sound like the illest nigga in New York. Nigga, if you had to smack me or threw a drink in my face, nigga, your whole family would have died. Well, why does nigga Africa Bam by the whole family ain't die? What am I missing, my nigga? I mean, I'm just saying, but the worst shit you can do to a man is fuck with his manhood. That's the worst shit you could do to a man is take his manhood. That's the that's the most feared thing niggas fear when they go to prison. I die by mine. But you won't die by yours? But you telling me if a nigga smacked you though and threw a drink in your face in front of in front of people, that's when you will react. You won't do shit when a nigga fuck with you behind closed doors. You'll go, you'll go do life for that nigga. You love him. That's your daddy. You on some little ass shit. <laughs> I mean, I know that ain't no New York shit. Cause I know some solid niggas from New York. <coughs> some solid folks from New York. Used to be trendsetters. But now you got niggas like you. But I've seen niggas like you, though, bro. That's a shit, man. You remind me of a lot of niggas, bro. A 
lot of niggas. But real shit though, how you gonna say you would have killed a nigga whole family if they smacked you and threw drinks? Because you ran with these niggas. You was with these niggas. Because you seen a nigga do that. Now, that man might have had to play chess at that moment. He might have had to take that L. Any real nigga know that. You might He might have been by himself and they had 10, 15 niggas. He know they got burners. He ain't got no burner. Do you want to die tonight and be a tough guy? Or do you want to motherfucking live to tomorrow? Those the options a real, sometimes a nigga have. But you telling me that man was supposed to die so he so he can prove a point right there. That's what you telling me. But you were walking around with the nigga that touched you on multiple occasions. And you were so scared of him and whoever was protecting him, nigga, you, you should have been willing to die about that. Not about a nigga throwing a drink and hitting you in the face here. He could have handled that on another occasion. Nigga, what, what you did? At that same age, you couldn't throw a drink and smack me in my face. You would have, your whole family would have died. I was a menace. My son has never been a shooter. In order to beat that nigga in New York, you have to... My son ain't never shot nothing. Free at last? Free at last? My son was talking like he had like 10 bodies. Man. My son ain't I never was... shot nobody. Yo, yo, yo. My man. son ain't never... I thought my son was the biggest killer out of New York. Until, son, I, until somebody told my me son, he needed some time to rob son, a contract. My son ain't never killed nobody. My son was a nice nigga that could rap. Now, think about it. Now, here this nigga go. Now, you you supposed to be a nigga that don't promote this type of shit, whatever, whatever, whatever. But right now, the words that are coming out of your mouth is saying, if you ain't a nigga that done killed somebody, you ain't nobody. You should not be respected. Nobody should hear nothing out your mouth. Nigga, you ain't important. You ain't real. Whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. That's what you saying right now. To any listeners that you got, any kids that looking up to you or whatever, nigga, you will not be respected from a person that you want to respect me, like what you and DJ Academics want to be viewed as. You will not be respected unless you killed somebody. That's what y'all doing right now. That man never said he was going to kill DJ Academics. He never said, he never even threatened to kill this man. He just said, hey, the shit that you saying, I know that there's real ramifications in the streets about talking to another grown man like that. DJ Academic just, man, I don't even want to, that's a whole nother fucking video. But anyway, this nigga, boy, I mean, y'all got to be careful, man. Kid, man, young niggas, man, y'all be careful with these niggas, bro. These niggas get your man son off the road, bro. These niggas would have been the niggas up, up the road trying to befriend you and shit, trying to kiss you and shit, my nigga. I'm telling you, boy, that's the type of nigga this nigga is, bro. That was able to fight in elementary and junior high school. My brother Eric Bennett loves my son. He hates when I talk about my son. He loves my son. He loves my son. He loves both of us. My son reached out to me to squash the beef. I squashed it with him. We started it back up. Is when I seen Tamika Mowry and my son on the news talking about let AutoZone and Target burn. And then I went outside in the Bronx and seen all of those young kids burning down mama and pop stores and bro like laundry mats. Or they was breaking in stores that was. So let me get this straight. You blaming my son because he said, or oh, you took a clip out of. Man, let the, I don't give a fuck about them burning up no motherfucking corporate America auto zones and family dollars and all that bullshit. I'm like, man, nobody giving no fuck about them folks shit. You know that shit. Yes, he said that. But what he didn't say, go and tell up your motherfucking goddamn local community. You ain't just say that. He ain't say that. God damn, this nigga stupid as the fuck. Do you realize what the fuck you just said? Bruh, so you telling me my son went to them little niggas and said, hey, man, y'all go fuck up the local community. Y'all go tell the Latinos and the black people business and shit. Pretty much was saying, nigga, there's an injustice here, and we don't give a fuck about them folk shit right now because of the fact that, nigga, they, don't rep they ain't out here marching with us. They ain't out here giving a fuck. You flip that around.
He got beef, whole beef with a nigga. Where well, you gonna trash a nigga name, run a nigga name down the street, try to make a nigga look soft, try to make a nigga look weak. I ain't gonna say a nigga, a black man. Uh, a man, a black man. You did all that to try to bring him to the status of a nigga. And DJ Academics. To, okay, whether the Black Lives Matter shit uh, end up turning out what it, what we thought it was, his, it's, it's about what his intention was. Now, what was y'all attention when you when you when you when you say this man ain't nothing because he ain't killed nobody, he ain't never killed nobody, he ain't no this and that, he ain't this and that. When the man ain't never, he ain't out here on videos or rags and talking about, hey, I kill you, this and that, this and that, this and that. This man came out and made a fucking career out of nothing, nigga. I got out of prison, nigga. I had, I'm, shit, I got to work in the um, on construction sites. Doing sheet metal mechanics, putting in air conditioning, don't work. Hey, it's a good trade for a nigga getting out. Shit, I'm successful in my eyes. So, I can imagine this man getting out, not knowing how to do nothing. He knew how to rap 10, 20, or however much time that man did 10 years ago. Nigga, the game done changed. All the th- only thing that man did is came and made himself a brand. And then when he seen some injustice, he tried to, you know what I'm saying, make a difference. Whether it, whether it turned out right or not, but here you got niggas talking about oh he ain't never he ain't never killed nobody he ain't never did this he ain't never did oh he threatening me and this and that this man that man ain't this dude too so it wasn't the stores that was owned by you would say the the the, the white people a lot of the stores that was affected was, was, was the people of color and then you telling them to do this and you know that they got the security system where they gonna come get these kids for the crimes that they committed. So when I tried to reach out and get, it didn't get no response, after I promised, like, mind you, I started beefing with um, Gully TV. Shout out to Gully. Now you hear that? After he reached out and didn't get no response. And then he totally pivoted. The fuck is going on, man? Who the puppy here? What? What? After he didn't respond to you? The man out here in the motherfucking streets, nigga. The fuck is you? You just trying to get a motherfucking story, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Shout out to Doggy Diamonds, man. Doggy Diamonds is a legend in the game. That, you know, he paved the way. Name Certain dudes name. paved the way for us. They never get no, they never get no shine. Somebody just said that uh, Doggy Diamonds, his channel got, like, taken out? Today his channel got hacked. Okay. And what Doggy gets his channel back? Doggy, Doggy, Doggy been rocking. He been rocking since Biggie, the Biggie era. Damn. He he he's been putting in work since the Biggie era. You got dudes like Sub Zero. Shout out to Sub Zero. You got dudes that was actually putting in work. So for me to be where I'm at right now, I'm honored. But Gully said some shit, yo, it was funny, he was like, yo, we gonna get Mike on the, the K-Shine, is he dead kick, cause your career's over, yeah, yeah, it's like, when, it's like, when you said that, when you called him an ambulance, yeah. well, I mean, like, I, said, I know the academics is watching me, when you called him the ambulance, yeah, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, it's like, now if you wanna see some lame shit in real time, you can watch two niggas sit here and try to create a narrative about a nigga. <laughs> that shit, wow. I mean, really, bro. This nigga say, when I heard you calling my ambulance, chase out with just kind of... <laughs> Boy, stop, man. Get the fuck out of here. Man, I don't even... I feel like it's so non-constructive for me and him to go at each other. Chances are, it's probably like really a low percentage we're even going to run into each other. Even though, like, I'm here in Jersey, he's in New York. Like, we're not even in the same circles. It's none of that, but, like, truth be told, I don't even think he's one of the people who want bad for the community. My only thing with my son is that he tries to be a leader. Everybody wants to, like, almost fill a Nipsey hustle void, but they're unwilling to go at the people my necessary son. to wear my son that. is the ultimate sucker. Double talking again. Just a minute ago, you said the man wasn't a sucker. No disrespect. That's what you were saying. 
now he's a sucker. Because DJ Academics say, oh, uh, because he didn't he didn't feed into the he didn't feed into the violence I wanted him to feed into. He he wasn't the killer that I uh, 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 that in his rap music ten years ago and the shit that he was saying uh, he improved that to me. See, DJ Academics to no fault of his own, he doesn't fully understand the streets. You know what I'm saying? He understand what it looked like from the outside looking in, which is fully understandable. You know what I'm saying? He ain't a six nine. He ain't one of these niggas. Ga 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 ga. He. Nigga, you know that you don't have to, you don't get no points off of coming at niggas like you, bro. That's not street nigga shit. That's bullying, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, man, this shit, that, that, that should have taken a whole fucking video or eight to try to explain, you know what I'm saying, how to not trick yourself off the street, especially when you done set your ass in that box. Which Mr. DJ Academics has never set his ass in no box. So he can't understand this fucking concept that some niggas don't, every nigga don't move the same. Not saying that the man looking to try to kill you. And he just understand that you're just talking shit for views, bro. Some niggas actually understand that shit. They ain't going out here looking for all that smoke because then that's really contradicting themselves when they out here looking for smoke, but they out here talking positive. You know what I'm saying? There's a bigger mission at hand. How it is that this man just came back around and called this man a sucker because he's saying that his only problem is he trying to talk positive and he feeling like and he don't agree with the way that he going about it. Make it make sense. That's the problem you got. Y'all couldn't have talked about that. You 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 ain't have to go. You you went to making all the videos and all that shit. Come on, my nigga. And then try to act like a motherfucking victim, bro. This shit here is two fucking girls talking about why the fuck they mad at their old boyfriend. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. I got a tape recording that I keep in my phone where Dr. Khaled Muhammad breaks down how these, these, these fake activists and artists gets locked up by appointment. They come home. Every time my son get arrested, it is by appointment. He got locked up recently, didn't he? He got locked up and it was a photo op. Let me explain. What do you mean? It was a photo op. It was fake. No, that don't happen. That right? shit, yes it does. And Khalid Muhammad broke it down. That's why Khalid Muhammad stepped away from the nation of Islam. Because he was saying too much. When you start to wake up, first and foremost, right? What message is you teaching black children? When you sit up there and you see a black child get shot by the police, then you go get your cardboard box. No justice. The no sign police, is always there. No race in police. So now you got to pick a sign. And then, hold up. Somebody's mother's crying. The child is in the freezer. Doctors have did the autopsy. The organs have been passed around. And you got my son running with gang bangers. You pull up to a specific place. Put your hands behind your back. Look at the camera. Freeze. Pose for the picture and go to fuck the jail. So you mean to tell me this black activist because I'm a revolutionary. You mean to tell me this black activist is teaching a new generation to be enslaved. Because under the Constitution, if you are in prison, that's the only time they have the right to make you a slave again. No. That's a lot down for right there. That was a that that was a very important point that Hussein Campbell just made. But the double talking though. Because you just motherfucking made it real important that this man be a straight-up killer. And he ain't nobody unless he a killer. So what the fuck message is you making? And then you talking about a nigga that's actually out there, outside. You inside on your couch talking about, I'm a revolutionary. Well, what if them cameras weren't on? Would, would he have still been there, you think? Because I believe it takes 
more than just goddamn just showing up one day. It's still, it's still, a, it takes a lot. You know what I mean? If you ever stood up for something, you'll know how many hours you got to actually go outside to goddamn even get them cameras out. You can't go out there and pick a time and just, you, you got to be out there. Because the people going to goddamn, yeah, the people right there, they going to know. So, man, come on with the bullshit, my nigga. Just, just, just keep it real, my nigga. Y'all, y'all two niggas ain't got not one solid reason that y'all mad at this man. Not one solid reason that you had beef. Why? Because the man told you you shouldn't be talking like that to another grown man. You know what I'm saying? And and, and not expect that grown man to feel some type of way where he would want to come at you in the streets. Not saying I'm going to come at you in the streets, but why would you talk to me like that? And goddamn, expect me not to react if I seen you in the streets. I really seen those conversations, DJ had. The man never threatened you in all that bullshit that you be accusing him of or try to act like this and that. And with, I mean, man, this shit here is crazy, man. Children, go get a protest, go get a sign. Protest. And when the police, hold up, you didn't even commit a crime while you protesting. Free at last. Free at last. God Almighty, I'm free at last. Then you sit around and you say, hold up, the police is waiting for you to put your hands behind your back. They let you take the picture, chick chick, and then you go to jail. What you teaching our children? That's not the gun of wars. That's not how Haiti, when they write, they write back for Britain, the British. What 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 our person thinks he's doing this check? The check. And you know the crazy part about it. Oh, well, I have a whole Yo, thing. You know what? Like, like so, this thing. And you mentioned before, like these, like five o five o one c three. Yeah, like yeah. Pretty much, my song does not get paid for music. Black. Like, I, I I I've analyzed this whole music career. Black. My song doesn't get paid more than two hundred fifty bucks per month. Black was helping, but Black was helping my song with bills. My song told my brother, Lord, I can't. Mutual brother that we had. He sat up there, told Lord, I can't. Black told me that. That he living in a. Uh, 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 he living in a, uh, 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 one of them on George Jefferson buildings now. Million dollar buildings. Tamika Mowry. Tamika Mowry. Cadillac commercials. She was on welfare. You went from welfare with no job to riches. Everybody, the, the, the female, the head of Black Lives Matter. This chick would have bought houses all around the world. Meanwhile, Tamir Rice's mother is saying, y'all just robbed the dead. So now it's not her son Campbell calling him out. Tamir Rice said, y'all used my child and other black people, children, to get ahead. Meanwhile, the real leader of Black Lives Matter, Darren Sills, and those brothers that came along with him, all of them was assassinated. Mind you, Tamika Mallory is the protege of Al Sharpton, FBI agent Al Sharpton, FBI informant. The news put Al Sharpton out there as an FBI informant. One of the first cases where Al Sharpton realized he could get the bag off of Sharpton's protege. Wow. My son, my Tamika Mallory is my son's big homie. And my son is, the, is like the picket side holder. He's the picket side holder. The ambulance. The, am, the ambulance chaser. Who won't chase the who won't chase the dead bodies of black rappers and help stop my son if my son would have joined forces forces and sat down with academics the way I'm doing right now he would have became one of the most powerful voices in the United States. Now make that make sense. Make that fucking make sense, man. If he would have sat down with DJ academics. A motherfucker that ain't been on the front line for shit with these niggas in America. Because he don't give a fuck about these niggas in America. Trust me. This man, his his roots are, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's who he give a fuck about. He doing this for his people. Y'all niggas ain't, ain't even on this man, what this man even thinking about. So let's just get that clear. So he don't give a fuck about this war in the streets, all this bullshit y'all got going on or whatever. Nigga, everything's about the views, the clicks, and the light, nigga, and fat in his pocket, nigga, and he know where he can run off to it with. That's just real shit. This nigga here, did he just say 
This man is an ambulance chaser. He's a, all this shit while y'all niggas just sitting at the crib making videos about this man where he actually just tried to do what he thought was right. Whether the shit didn't shape out the way we thought it was going to shape out or not. All the conspiracy theories, if he feel like Antifa goddamn um, infiltrated the, the whole plan and everything, he probably know more than what he can speak about. You niggas want photo ops. That's it. Talking points, clips, all that shit. Man, be careful about the, the information you get from these dumbass niggas. I mean, they entertain. Don't get me wrong. I tune into the nigga shit. I used to tune in, so I can't even listen to this nigga no more. I swear to God, I used to I used to listen to uh, because when I heard the story and everything, and when I first ran across his um, his channel and shit, you know the rocking nigga snot boxing. And I thought it was just funny shit, nigga. I just thought the nigga was really just you know just being an entertainer. But then the nigga was really just trying to get credit, credit, credit. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, really, nigga? Come on, bro. You, he's real. You, he's a real weirdo. Fucking weirdo. Bro, I seen this nigga do some weird, say some weirdo shit, bro. And if that YouTube check worth, you know what I'm saying? Your integrity like that. And putting all these targets on your back like that. Same thing with DJ Academics. I mean... I don't really think he done as much as fucked up as Hassan Campbell. But, you know what I'm saying? It's just, he's, you know, he's here for the, for the industry. You know what I'm saying? He's not, he's not, a, he's not an American black man. So he can't even understand phantom the way some of y'all niggas move. You get what I'm saying? I can respect that shit. But, in his mindset, if a nigga, he, he got to, when he see these American niggas, you know what I'm saying, that was raised in the streets and these, you know what I'm saying, that got this mindset, he, he still ain't learn how to react to these niggas. He know that they feeling like they threatening him, but he can't allow that shit. He got a bag now. So, yeah, he on his shit now. So, I can understand why he can feel attacked and, you know what I'm saying, just because a nigga might try to check him. He 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 thinking that a check is mean a nigga trying to kill him. You know what I'm saying? That's just his mindset. So, I can respect why he be feeling some type of way, but this nigga's son, he just picked fights with everybody for YouTube views, and that's the way he feeding his goddamn family. I guess I got respect that, but this nigga is a danger to the motherfucking black community. That's all I got to say about that nigga. And don't leave that nigga around. None of your kids, especially with alcohol around. But because he scripted through George Soros and Black Lives Matter, talking about he's, he's until freedom. Well, until freedom is supposed to be the voice of the people. How do you? I challenge, and my whole thing is like this, right? For my son. My number one question for my son is to make him out. Let me talk to you. Can I talk to you for a minute? Huh? How do you realize that Antifa infiltrated your movement while y'all was marching and started vandalizing all of the communities where the black people lived at, burning down our stores, our communities, and then you didn't tell the young black children Antifa infiltrated our, mu our movement. Cease and desist. Do not do no more because the feds is watching. And Antifa was paid to do this, but they also paid our children to do this, where some of our children is getting locked up still to this day because they was tracked through these stores, still in cell phones and everything. Bruh, did you just hear what this nigga said? Why this man ain't gonna tell these folk, hey, stop what you're doing, the feds watching, you know what I'm saying, cool out. Nigga, what? do you realize that's probably what the man fucking did, nigga? And guess what can still happen, nigga? The Antifa, you think they gonna stop just because this man said, nigga, that, it's called infiltration, dumbass boy. You dumbass boy. But you know what you're doing, bro. You ain't that dumb. You know exactly what you're doing. You still trying to paint this narrative and shit, uh, having to justify a reason that you got a problem with this man. Well, you ain't even got no problem. You just creating a distraction. That's just plain and simple. Let's just call it how it is, bro. You're creating a distraction. Academics, I'm, I'm assuming you with the game because you creating a distraction. Them boys ain't had nothing to goddamn... Man, please. I ain't heard my son even speak of y'all niggas like that. He ain't making videos saying, oh, this and that, this and that. At the time, it was it. It is what it is. It was uh, every time you go on a goddamn um, interview, Hassan, 
I swear it's the same fucking story. You telling these same fucking stories, you trying to make it like you was the goddamn gangsters nigga in the fucking world. Okay, you saying you had three bodies, you gonna be three bodies, you gonna kill three people. Why is that something to brag about? You done been locked up for three bodies. You you name drop. I know so I know more people from just hearing it come out your mouth. I I don't know none of these folks in New York. Shouldn't know none of these niggas that done did this and that, this and that. You make sure to keep every nigga name in your mouth to try to get some credibility off of them because you heard them or know them or, you know what I'm saying, bump shoulders with them. You want to tell about somebody that you done shot. Okay, so what? But you mad at this man because he ain't killed nobody, but he out here trying to fight for injustice? Make that shit make sense. Both of y'all are mad at this man because he ain't killed nobody. And he out here fighting with Black Lives Matter that's been infiltrated by Antifa and that, in your opinion, you think that uh, uh, all the guys that have been assassinated, all the, re- all the founders of it, it's being infiltrated. It's being ran by a white man, which all that might have unfolded in being true. He was rolling with um, Tamika Mallory, and, you know, she was dead, bro, even, even though she fucking was a childhood actor and sister's sister and had a hit uh, show that probably paying her for the rest of her fucking life. But, um, yeah, she needed money so bad, so she joined. She probably got bamboozled the same fucking way. They thought that they were doing something right. And just like how uh, MLK stood up and did something right, what the FBI do? They take pictures of him uh, fucking around behind his wife back and this and that, this and that. These folks know how to infiltrate your movement. And they use motherfuckers like you. So I'm assuming that you're part of the infiltration. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that these guys... uh, Hands free clean. I don't, I can't tell you if he if he was knowingly doing the shit or not. But from your coming from your perspective and coming from what you put out there in the streets, what you put out here on the fucking uh, YouTube perspective, especially when it comes to talking about you know what I'm saying the, the the shit that you be talking about with other men and shit you be talking about with with kids and all that shit like that. Instead of doing it in a positive way or you know helping abuse kids, you know what I'm saying, like yourself, you know what I'm saying, because that could have happened to anybody, any fucking body. So you could be helping a lot of people, but instead you spreading that goddamn, oh, he ain't, he ain't never killed nobody, he ain't nobody, why, uh, why should he be the voice of the people and this and that, he, he running with Tamika Mallory, she was trained by Al Sharpton, yeah, we know all that bullshit about Al Sharpton, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying, we know about all these folks. But the, you made you making people forget about the fucking bottom line message. They was fuck. There's yeah. There's people being killed by police every fucking day, and a lot of them don't get that attention. And to keep that fucking energy going to get these folks to to give some results, sometimes you have to use your voice, your passion. Nobody ain't know no goddamn my sign. You acting like he was Jay Z or something out there. Shit. He would just as normal as it would have been if I was out there. So cut the bullshit, my nigga. If you was out there, hell, you might have could have changed changed the word. What did you do? Please, goddamn, make sure you 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 one of your videos show what you did for the cause. I challenge Hassan Campbell to show what he did for the cause, and I'm gonna get out of here with just with on that note. But if you haven't already, please hit that like, share, subscribe. It's the Kush, man. Y'all tune in for the next time of the YouTube streaks. Like, share, subscribe again. I'm out.